is a story that has been pumping away in Parliament for some time. Since 2001, more than 400 Defence Force personnel have died by suicide, and it's something that has seen a groundswell of support, particularly from veterans and their families, about greater scrutiny. The Prime Minister did announce an rolling commission into the issue. It had initially received support of a number of family members, including a high-profile campaigner, Julie Ann Finney, whose son died by suicide as well. However, she says that after she examined the details, she did change her mind. Because I've had time to absorb what's happening, uh, certainly when I spoke to the Prime Minister last Tuesday, I was very excited. But as I've looked back um, uh, to the review, it, it's another review. Um, there's no analysis of what's happened, no analysis of the systemic failures of ADF and DVA. So, no, we still need a Royal Commission. I've said that from the beginning and I, I haven't changed. I just had a moment there where I was listening but not seeing the detail. We've had enough reviews. Um, you know, it, it really is a talk fest, and I've been talk festing about this for the last nine months. I've done as much talking. I want investigation. Joining us live now for more on this is Jackie Lambie, independent senator in the, uh, in the Senate. Sorry, thank you for your time, Jackie. Yeah, oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for having me on. Now, you were quite vocal yesterday with a number of mothers speaking about this issue. Why have you changed your mind about your support for the Prime Minister's solution to have this instead of a Royal Commission? Yes, I haven't changed my mind. I've always asked for a Royal Commission. Um, look, we've had 17 reviews in 17 years. The department's actually got worse. It's not just about the Department of Veterans Affairs, it's about the Department of Defence and making them accountable. Uh, this needs to be completely independent. Uh, when I, I spoke to the Prime Minister again yesterday, he's, he's flip-flopping all over the show, to be honest with you. Uh, what Department of Veterans Affairs is telling me what they expect out of this and what the PM, they're completely... Uh, you know, they're completely got no idea. This has got very little substance to it. This is on the run. Uh, we know that he's going to chuck $40 million into this. Well, you know, use your Royal Commission's up around that $100 million mark. So we are terribly concerned that we're getting a glass half full here. Uh, we've seen, you know, that it, it, it blows me away that we can have Royal Commissions on pink bats. We can do it on aged care. Uh, we can do it on the CFMEU. Uh, you know, we can do it on Dondale Detention Centre. Uh, you know, but apparently veterans aren't good enough to have their own Royal Commission and no, we don't trust them. We don't trust them. And when he's telling me, the Prime Minister's telling me that, you know what, the Attorney-General will watch over this, I go, OK, we're done, mate, we're done. We can't... If this was such a great idea, when he announced it, why didn't he bring all the... De this is... Why didn't he bring all the details out? You know, why, why wasn't it set in stone, this is how it's going to run, this is who's going to be on it, this is how, you know, this, this is going to be really wide terms of reference here. We, we just don't know anything, really. It just, there's just no substance to it. If you look at the track record, though, of those Royal Commissions you mentioned, very little came out of the CFMEU one, very little came out of the Pink Bats one. Is it not better to have ongoing scrutiny and more likely individual scrutiny of cases like we'd see from a coroner as opposed to a Royal Commission where we've been waiting years for a result and might not get one? Oh, you know, you'll get, you, you will get, um, you'll get a result. You know, it's 12 months, they'll get the recommendations. Um, my point, if, if it's so good, uh, why, why can't we do both? Why can't we have that? I would imagine that a Royal Commission would probably say you're going to have to have a babysitter over the top of these two departments. There's no doubt about that. So uh, if he cares that much, then give us both. Well, so what are you actually saying that's lacking? Because there is an independent commissioner that's appointed here. They can look back into all of the suicides of veterans since 2001, the more than 400, and they'll be able to launch separate inquiries into future issues as well. What's lacking out of that that you're calling for? Well, what's lacking out of that is it's going to come under the Attorney General's department. To me, that's not independent. That's the, first, um, that's the first problem I have with it. But when you say not independent, I mean, it's described as an independent commissioner. They might need to be within some sort of department because that's the nature of a government. They have to be somewhere, but the government's saying it's independent. Why do you think they won't be independent? Oh, because, like I said, it's still going to come under the Attorney-General's department. I, we just, there's no trust left in the Department of Veterans Affairs. They've been calling for a Royal Commission. My, my point is, why, why if, if it's so important, then great, put the babysitter over the top of the Department of Veterans Affairs, um, you know, and, and give us a Royal Commission as well. Why can't we do both? I mean, this is, this is really important stuff. We're losing two or three of these veterans a week. Let's be honest here. So, it's just, this is on the run. This is on the run stuff, and I'm, I'm just not putting, I'm not putting up with this.
Just on that independence point, though, a royal commissioner is appoint, anoint, uh, appointed by the Attorney General on the advice of the Prime Minister. So it's kind of the same process. Yeah, but it's not under the department. It's actually independent. He comes out, has nothing to do with the Attorney General, pretty much. Why can't the commissioner be in the same way, appointed? Because but apparently he's, he's not he's not being independent. He's coming under the Attorney General. So how is that being independent? I just, I'm, you know, I mean, you know, this could change. It just keeps depends on who you ask. Depend because it's just it's a two-page document. Well, are you open document. if the government clarifies some detail around that independent commissioner and the role? Are you open if that's your main issue and they assure you there will be true independence? Could you be on board? Oh, look, I'll, I'll have a look when they finally get the document done and um, show us exactly what's going on. I, you know, I, I was certainly open, but um, it's just really disappointing. And I think uh, for them, for many out there that have served, they're feeling like this is a slap in the face and they're, they're treated like their second degree. And, no. you know, and that, that's... So. No, 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 fair enough. Uh, if we move on to the Phil Gaitchen's report that the crossbench was demanding, it was a real show of strength that you're all standing there demanding it, putting Matthias Cormann on the line, saying he'd have to go back to the backbench if it wasn't produced, and then the support seemed to fall through. Yeah, well, that's um, very disappointing, unfortunately. Um, I don't think that's setting a good example. For Australia, I, you know, I, uh, Pauline Hanson did call me and she said, I, I'm not happy in doing this. She explained her reasons why. That's up to Pauline. Um, my point is, there's no, these people do not get disciplined, and we cannot be, we cannot be putting up, we can't be putting um, up with this. I, I, I can't say why don't you release the report. Um, you know, people in Australia are sick of it. They've had enough. Um, but I think. If you can't discipline your own from here, and I've been getting some real blowback on this over social media and phone calls to my office, then why, if, if they can't show integrity up here and do the right mm. thing, why would I, why would I be voting for an insurance integrity bill? So, could, so you know, so... Uh, sorry, are you saying that because of the action of the government, you might, as a result, not vote for the insuring integrity bill until the Gations report is released? Uh, what I'm saying is, until I start showing some integrity up here and disciplining their own, and, you know, when, when you put someone like uh, Senator McKenzie back into a prime position of saying, well, she's the uh, Senate leader of the Nationals, I think no one's, no one's being taught anything up here. And that's really disappointing. We're supposed to be leaders and show, you know, and lead by example. So my, my whole point is, with, yeah, with that Gratians report, if we can't, so if, well, I just want to clarify that. If that's not released, will you vote for the Insuring Integrity Bill? Well, we haven't finished with the Insuring Integrity Bill because we're still, we're still, that's going to be quite reduced. You know, like I've said, I do not want workers penalised. Union workers should be able to go out and strike. Um, I do not want, you know, it's got to be a lot more targeted. There's no doubts about that. But, you know, I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking, well, if you can't discipline your own and you can't show integrity, then maybe it's about time we put these talks on hold with ensuring integrity. Um, until we see some real... Until we see some, you know, some discipline going on here and until we see that report, yeah. So is there anything else that you want to see from the government that might convince you to then support ensuring integrity or it's just coming down to this one Gaitchen's report about sports rules? Well, bottom line is, we, we, you know, we're still um, talking about how that bill is going to look, right? So my point is... Until you start leading by example and doing the right thing, um, maybe it's about time we put a we put a hold on those talks. So you will put a hold on them? Yeah, I'm going to put a hold on this morning, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, All right. Done. Fair enough. Jackie Lambie, as always, thank you for your time. Oh, you're welcome. And please, save our heroes. This is what we want. We want a Royal Commission. We'll have both. Let's go. Jackie, as always, thank you for your time. Thank you. Now, we do need to mention if you or anyone you know is feeling distressed, you can call Lifeline on 131114. Support for veterans and their families is also available through open arms by calling 1800 011 046.